Recording is on. <laughs> hey, Batter, are you uh, able to? Um... Uh, Show me to the slideshow, mate. Slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give yeah, it a okay. go. Let me you got your, dig you know, into dig six, into six screen setup. Yeah, it's, it's six screen to five. Until you, oh, it's way, luckily yeah. it's at the top. Luckily it's at the top. Excellent. Hey everybody, <laughs> uh, welcome to the back community call for Tuesday, September twenty fourth, twenty twenty four. Doing this live from London tonight. It's late out here, probably earlier where you're at, unless you're Belladone or Battern or Stan or any of our warriors that do this every week this late. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> I hope you all are doing well. Uh, we got Battern filling in for Jenny on the deck tonight, so uh, I will uh, hand it off to him to kick off the uh, updates. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the weekly Bat Community Update. We've got our slideshow. Uh, here we go. Uh, so here I've highlighted some uh, ambassador localizations we've got going on. Uh, we've got uh, Bat Kenya. Um, we've got uh, Brave Bat Netherlands. We've got Bat India. And we've got the consistently wonderful Bat Attention token Latin America. Like It really is invaluable work uh, getting text translated into local languages because, you know, not everyone can read English, so it's handy to have. Um, here's some memes and a uh, Twitter, or should I say X? I think it's been long enough to know, you know, call it X at this point. Um, we've just managed to find this one before, uh, before the call went on with uh, someone did drew a brave fan art when it wasn't AI, which I thought was pretty cool. You know, you don't see much apart from G, you don't see much non AI art. Uh, we've got absolute quote tweet banger by Keith, uh, Oprah GX is spyware. What fucking browser isn't? <laughs> then he sh <laughs> show him the brave. <laughs> and he got one one I did myself because you know you got to toot your own horn occasionally. Yeah, uh, how it feels to be brave and see someone else's dirty ad ridden browser window, <laughs> someone looking down in contempt and laughing. Um, bat poker. I've uh, had uh, the bat brigade poker clan play in the token twenty forty nine tournament. We came in 80 seconds, so uh, we need to train more. But it was kind of cool to have people kind of representing the Bat Brigade in there. Uh, come join us before the community call every Tuesday. Come join us before the community call every Tuesday. Hmm. Don't know what the hell I wrote there. <laughs> but, yeah, we need some practice. So come along, 15 Bat for the winner, 10 for second, 5 for third. Uh, the link's in Discord. Uh, go ahead, step Go ahead, Scottson. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, Crap. Yeah, why would you bring me on and then take off my slide? Like that, because that's, I, ac I accidentally clicked it. There that's, we go. That's, that's just rude. Okay. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, this is Godson with your African Ambassadors update for the week. I, uh, I was not here last week, so I wasn't able to sing Stan's uh, praises for managing to, you know, make it out there to East Safari. Um, so shout out to Stan. It, it was very, uh, you know, very like, I don't know, brave of him, I guess. Um, but yeah, sometime last week, he, he also attended something called a Web, Web3 JS tour, uh, sponsored by Web3 JS. Um, this was not something he asked us to uh, fund or, or anything like that. He literally just showed up there, did his thing, gave a, a presentation, and then, you know, just said, hey, I was here. Um, so, you know, really appreciate, you know, him him being able to, like, just kind of follow up and just do stuff on his own and, and that kind of stuff. It's very nice. Um, uh, we do have Alfred, though, 
go into the uh, the Cyberchain event. We've been uh, in a preparing for this for like a month now. We had a uh, a media um, sponsorship type barter thing with them as well. So this is like our second big uh, event in in the continent uh, for the month after the e Safari one. Uh, he sent in a proposal as well, but uh, he has not got you know, gotten a response for it. Uh, it'd be nice if he if he got a, a response for his um, uh, event, um, you know, financial support uh, proposal. So I just wanted to bring that up and then uh, kind of like prepare us for like you know the the uh, you know I don't know like you know what he's gonna be able to achieve when he uh, gets out there. Um, Thirdly, our AlphaX initial campaign is almost up. Um, again, I wasn't here last week to you know, you know, talk about how like the campaign is progressing and, and stuff because you know it's only supposed to run for like two weeks. It's our first paid campaign, so you know it's kind of a, a big milestone. I, it's not like a ton of money, but you know I'm, I'm just happy that you know we 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 have like a proof of concept so that we can actually like you know bring a uh, you know a campaign from like calls to, you know, Twitter DMs to, you know, Telegram DMs, and then finally to, like, okay, they actually give, give us money. So, you know, uh, shout out to Alpha X, and we hope that will be more, like, you know, paid, paid campaigns so we can actually, you know, fund the, the African ambassadors and stuff. Dude, it's, it's no small thing, man. And, uh, like, I remember, like, the first check we got for Brave Ads was, like, it was either 50 or 500 bucks or something. It was some small amount, but just getting that first one over the line is a big deal. So props to you guys for doing it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, finally, this is not really brave related, but you know, like most of you guys know, my dad is, uh, is late and which is you know, kind of why I'm, I'm in the continent right now. Uh, we fixed the, the burial for uh, December 12th and 13th. So if you think you can make it all the way out here to the middle of nowhere in West Africa, uh, let me know so I can, uh, you know, prepare for your arrival. I would like to have like a little brave contingency, um, you know, that'd be nice if, if, if anybody can uh, can make it. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's my updates for the week. Uh, thank you for having me. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Gatson. Um, hi, everyone. I hope you're doing great today. Um, last week, I talked about Bad Mexico's participation at Ethereum Mexico, but... Oh, my God. Can you... I'm so sorry about the noise. Can you hear it? No, I can't hear it. Okay, perfect. It's rainy. <laughs> um, okay, but anyways. Um, well, they did an amazing job introducing the community and engaging with the attendees. And I shared some photos and content they got at the event, but I just wanted to share very quickly one last post that I couldn't get on time last week. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so like I said, and uh, to give you more context about this post, the Bad Mexico team, uh, they just came up with, with a fun and um, creative activity where they basically wanted to wear horse heads with their brave t-shirts to get people's attention and an interest. And with this idea, they engaged even more with the people there and everyone wanted to take pictures with them to share on X and other platforms. Um, so that also helped a lot with brand visibility and exposure because everyone um, everyone got to see the Brave logo thanks to the crazy horse heads. Um, so that was a fun and effective idea that I wanted to share again, but now with a post. Next slide, please. Thank you. And yeah, thank you. And another thing I wanted to... Um, that I mentioned last week was that during the event, <laughs> next slide, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the other one, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, during the event, the, the Ethereum Mexico event, the team launched the Bad Mexico Instagram account to have more, uh, more presence on different social media platforms and reach younger audiences. So um, they set up the account there 
uh, but they just started working on it like a couple of days ago, um, you know, getting followers and posting content. And also later this week, they're going to make a post on X announcing a raffle of Brave merch to, um, to grow the community on Instagram, you know, to get more followers and to keep engaging with them there too. And um, we have a lot of presence on X, um, for example, in the Balatam account, but it, I feel like it's important to also create content in other platforms and Instagram is just a, um, just a great way to do that. So we're excited to see what we can build there. So shout out to Donatello, Eric and Cariño for that. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> Okay, now I'm very excited to share with you the promotional video that Jenny, Guillermo, and I made for Echo. Um, we posted it on X and YouTube, both on the back community, in case you haven't watched it. Um, so the video starts with a, um, a small like description on Echo. Then we mentioned some of the meme coins feature on this issue. Um, of course, there are more, but we couldn't mention all, them, all of them. Um, but you can find everything about them when you get your copy, so don't worry. Um, and um, also, of course, we added, we added like where, when, and how to get the to get your copy. Super simple. Um, but yeah, I really hope you like it and get your copy easily. Um, we plan to make more content like this, so this is just the beginning. And also, your opinion matters. So if you have suggestions or content you would like to see from us, please let us know. And now Guillermo will share more details about Echo and it's dropped tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, the format on that video is great too, by the way. Like it was cool. I was in a, I'm at an offsite here with Carlos. Sherelle's here too. I think she's joined us just right now. But like uh, I was standing next to Carlos when I saw that on, on uh, X and I was like, he's like, what? Send it. it was really good. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, yeah. it wasn't that hard to make, but this is like the first. Yeah, this is like a well, when I started doing videos, I think it was last year, it was a different format. So this new format, I feel like it's easier because, well, I feel like I know how to use TikTok tools. So it was like a similar uh, TikTok format with CapCut. Uh, but yeah, it was I had so much fun making it. But of That's course, awesome. it takes thank you but of course it takes a little bit of time because you know i'm like okay this the face i did in this clip was horrible i'm going to do it again and again and again <laughs> so that's why it takes a little bit of time but actually it was very i had so much fun with it so i hope i can make more videos Great. thank you go ahead g i do hope that you can make more videos and that's me um, so as, as Paul said, uh, our issue of Draco is dropping tomorrow. It's going to be at 11 a.m. in GMT plus one. So that's basically Lisbon time. Uh, all that you need to do is go on Drip. I will send a URL on chat and just subscribe to the magazine. Once you're subscribed on the day that it launches tomorrow, you just have to collect the magazine. You have to go there uh, on the main page in Drip House in click start securing and it should be one of those it sounds confusing but it's honestly much much smoother uh, than what i'm making it to be next page better so we're currently at 98.3000 followers so we're just a little bit shy over uh to a hundred thousand so sadly, we didn't get the 100,000 for the second issue, but for the third one, I think it's granted. It's got to be. Um, so this next issue is going to feature two traits, a common one and a rare one. The rare will be sent to 30,000 random wallets that are subscribed to the Echo channel. So all you need to do is go there, subscribe, and if you're lucky, you might get the rare one. It's, um, I don't know how much. That, that would be close to 30% of uh, odds of you getting... Uh, a rare one. Uh, Brave ads. So as you might have seen, we have been running some Brave ads. This is something we mentioned uh, the last week that we're going to do. And um, the first one, I believe, went on the 21st. And they've been running almost daily uh, until now. Of course, there are also regional ads. So you might not be able to see these in your country. You might uh, be seeing another different ad. But um, 
in Portugal, at least, we have been seeing this. And tomorrow is going to be the last round where we'll be seeing uh, these two. So I'm excited about it. It was really, really nice. I think this is probably the best uh, images that I produced for advertisement. And I'm, I'm very proud of it. Next slide, veteran. Uh, on socials, uh, we had a very good idea um, to generate more and increase our engagement on our socials. So basically, since we are featuring meme coins on this issue, it was a given that we should also have them promote um, this upcoming drop on socials. And as you can see, hmm, generated six comments, five reposts, 30 likes. Wax, six comments, 29 reposts, 75 likes. And Woof, an astonishing 3.9 thousand comments, 2.2 thousand reposts, and 7 uh, thousand likes. I'm still getting a, a bunch of notifications. So this is still on growing. Like every hour that I go on X, I have like over 20 plus notifications. And a huge shout out to Revision for putting this together. If it wasn't for Revision, I don't think we would have pulled these numbers with uh, with Wolfie. Next slide, please. I love seeing like the mouse just very slowly going and manually clicking. <laughs> so next for for Echo and and the things that I'll be working on, uh, we'll be just continuing uh, getting this momentum going. And some of you might know that every year I do the bat over, which basically includes me drawing, um, making a drawing that is bat related the day. But I want to go beyond this year and I want to do uh, past collections. Like if you remember the um, bat landscapes, I want to finish that collection. Initially, I said I'll do 100 and I only did 73. So I have 27 more uh, missing. So I want to finish that collection on the first week. And the second week, I want to revisit uh, another collection that was a Dune collection. Um, and have like something special for the end of that. And the third week, I want to promote um, the new images that Samsung usually tries to promote by having custom backgrounds for the new tab. Uh, so whenever you don't have ads, you have your own custom images that are brave related or bad related. And on the last week of the month, I want to promote other artists within the community. I know this is a bit abstract for me just to be talking about it, but I promise you tomorrow, not tomorrow, but next week, I will showcase exactly what I'm talking about. I just didn't have the opportunity to write up exactly what I'm planning for the Batover, since it was all about Echo, but that is the plan. Write up and then present it on next week with the images and the straight on plan. I'll pass on the Mac. Yeah, yeah, uh, yep. Um, good job, G. Looking forward to Echo. And just yeah, a reminder that um, you have to go and claim that um, next edition or uh, when it comes out tomorrow on Drip. So uh, it won't automatically get airdropped to you. So um, a reminder to go go claim that. And I think, but you'll have some time, like like a couple of weeks or so, right, G, to claim it. Yes, it will be available for four weeks, so entire whole month. Four weeks. So okay. not only will be uh, you'll have the opportunity to collect uh, this issue of Echo, but also be collecting as we drop uh, weekly um, the next drops that we'll be doing for Battleware. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Good work on that, man. It looks looks good. And Thank uh, you for having me, sir. Engaging, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then uh, for me, uh, let's see this last week or so, token 2049 and break, Solana Breakpoint were going on in Singapore. Uh, we didn't directly have uh, any um, partnership stuff going on there, but uh, we did have, I know Carlos was there, maybe a few others from Brave. I don't know if Carlos is here and wants to say anything about it, but uh, if he is, he certainly can. Um, but, uh, in conjunction with those events that were going on, um, there were a couple things like uh, Karate Combat 49 event uh, that uh, took place out there in Singapore. Uh, of course, Brave was um, on the mat in, in India, you know, uh, feed on on the uh, stream. And um, okay, well, that's good that he, uh, Luke said uh, Carlos had some good updates from the conference. That's good to hear. Uh, but he's not on the call so maybe one of these uh upcoming calls he'll be on and can share it so looking forward to that but um yeah looking at um i was trying to find 
some of the numbers for the karate combat stuff and uh on youtube it said it had about three million views on um the twitter feed or twitter stream it said seven million uh views now of course it's not directly related to brave and bat but we're out there we're on there and we're part of it so and of course that's um in addition to you know their instagram um stuff that they post and and other social media things that they post and they've been growing a lot uh lately i think um uh i think i saw that their instagram account has like 1.6 million followers now and and um so yeah the more uh, and i think it's a, a good opportunity for us to kind of continue that and then also maybe do some more things um yeah one of the things i was kind of hoping to do uh before this event was like uh maybe sponsor one of the, the fighters where they kind of come out and some and fight maybe with some brave gear on or something like that and uh i think we're gonna try and work on some of those kind of things maybe a few other ideas as far as like kind of uh expanding that uh collab there so um and then also in conjunction with um the breakpoint and singapore events was um the moonwalk fitness uh singapore stroll uh which we we talked about and that wrapped up the other day um and thank you luke and jenny for uh, hooking us up with the sponsorship there with uh, six thousand bat that was given away to the people that uh, participated in that and uh, there was 353 total players uh which means uh 350 and i think you only had to get 5,000 steps a day. So it was pretty, pretty easy to get. And I think most of the people did. So that means, you know, you'll have quite a few more and new um, bat holders. I think the claim just went live today. And according to my calculations so far, we've had about 62 new bat uh, holders on Solana. So, and that's, that's just the beginning. So uh, I'm sure we'll get most of those um, on there as well. So that's that was a cool event. Those are fun. Uh, keep you motivated. Get your steps in and get you know get your bat. Um, so hopefully we can do some more things like that or similar things. We'll see. I guess what happens there. Um, and then not necessarily bat or brave related directly, but um, you know Ginsler was getting grilled today, so that was kind of fun to watch. Um, and uh, they're kind of kind of <laughs> ripping them a, a little bit there on, on Congress. Uh, so good to see. Got a kind of fun to watch but um we'll see what happens there of course once once regulations get figured out and, and crypto goes mainstream we're going to be in good position uh, as a, a browser that's you know user first privacy focused and crypto native so uh looking forward to those times but yeah i think that's all i had thanks guys Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, cheers for your patience with the slides and the clicking. <laughs> well, that's out to Luke. Well done, well done. That was fantastic, guys. Uh, thanks for the update. It's cool to see everything going on. Um, yeah, so we're doing a bunch of things this week. Um, it's an offsite. I actually did some uh, updates um, for folks out here that I thought I could uh, share with you all. That was pretty interesting. Um, Jenny helped with some of these uh, with some of these slides, but I'm doing. A, um, I did kind of an update on on Bat to uh, a bunch of people in the company. So I will share my screen and show you all what I shared because some of it's pretty interesting. And then we can open it up for questions. And this is stuff that'll go into a post too. So you're kind of getting a preview here. Um, so let me share this. Oh, there's definitely going to be a little buzz, buzz, so I will pass it to you once I'm wrapped up here. So, um, kind of gave a cool little wrap up on on where things are at with Bat. I did a bunch of digging too in the stats. Um, so uh, not a not a secret to everyone here, but we uh, Bat's like ninety nine percent of the uh, one and a half billion supply circulating. Um, Cross chain growth uh, continued. Active holder caps are growing on Polygon, BNB Chain, Avalanche, and Solana. Um, and uh, one interesting stat, like um, just to kind of show you guys, like, so this is the meme coin growth. This is just on 
Pump.Fun and Moonshot on Solana from February of 2024 to September. Um, they pumped out like over 2 million tokens on just on those two um, protocols from Solana, like not even including other networks, et cetera. But like, it's one of those things where I know a lot of them go illiquid quickly, but um, I don't think we've never seen this kind of token generation before um, at this scale. Um, and the fact that we're maintaining like our distribution count, it, it's pretty meaningful, I think. Um, but uh, but yeah, so um, I did a quick breakout of um, just some other updates like uh, that were observable. And this might not be a surprise to many folks here, but um, you know, there are still more on-chain holders of BAT than there are BNB, Uniswap, uh, CRO, and others on you know active on-chain, um, uh, according to EtherScan at least. Uh, and uh, I did a bit of a deep dive into the Solana side for DeFi. Um, we're seeing Orca, Meteor, Lafinity, and Bonk Swap uh, activity in DeFi with BAT. Um, also noteworthy, like Helio, this is not new stuff, folks here, but Travala, Solana Pay, Travel Swap have pay with BAT support um, in their Web3 commerce rails. Um, and, you know, the on chain stuff's growing. Um, and it's going to give you this a snapshot. Um, I ran a comparison against uh, previous years, but, you know, there's the BAT tagged um, UGP reserve wallet that people track on uh, on chain. Um, and, uh, you know, about 10% of BATs in DeFi. Uh, on Ethereum and, and Solana, um, 20% of BAT is held by exchanges, uh, and the other 70% basically is is held by on-chain holders. Um, you know, it's not a perfect snapshot. For example, on exchanges, there are sub-accounts that aren't accounted for here. Um, so like Binance or Coinbase will have, you know, sub-holders that aren't counted as on-chain because they're custodial, but um, it's just a good kind of snapshot of, of where we're at, uh, which is that was pretty interesting, worthy of sharing here. Um, one other one that was really interesting too. Um, so the cross chain holder growth uh, did a snapshot from one year ago. Um, the the bat holder count on Polygon has gone up 393 uh, percent from 23 23 to 2024, uh, which is pretty interesting. It's like a 393 percent change. Um, uh, even on BNB chain, I mean, we haven't done a ton of promo or anything on these places, but that's getting held more on these chains. It's pretty interesting. Uh, BNB chain is up 20 percent. Uh, Avalanche uh, is up 197 uh, percent, and uh, Solana is a big one. Or uh, you know, over the past year, we've grown it by 619 percent. And these numbers aren't massive yet, but I think you know, any the it's you know, you start from zero and kind of move up. Uh, and I think it's meaningful to track as we we go forward. Um, and worth sharing here, uh, just you know, because it was taking a bit of a snapshot. Um, Jenny provided me some really good stats from the community that I shared with the company too. Um, if you aggregate across all the channels that we have. Um, X, Discord, Odyssey, Reddit, Reddit, YouTube community, um, over 557,000 subscribers or followers or, you know, aggregate, you know, uh, following people like on all these channels. Um, Jane had a nice little wrap up on the community calls. So uh, we've had like 29,000 uh, simulcast views since May of 2024 when the team started to simulcast these to X, which was pretty awesome. Um, and, and, and to date, we've done over 87 calls, which is pretty, pretty cool, too. Um, since we started doing the spaces with Unfungible, we've seen over a million space impressions. Uh, that's on promotion and on, you know, just impressions from views and shares, et cetera. Uh, we've done over 25 spaces with Unfungible, 26,000 listeners, uh, three, three X increase over previous spaces, at least. And it's kind of a low average, but um, strong, really strong. Um, and then the ambassadors, like uh, some of this has been shared before, but 150 applicants, 65 actives, six continents, 20 regional bad ambassador accounts. Uh, their referral, referral program we share with the company too, um, to kind of show how you all were able to like, you know, grow the browser and, and share a bit there. So uh, I hope that's helpful for people. I wanted to share that with you guys, um, just so you guys get a sense of uh, some of the stuff we were sharing. Um, and yeah, I hope that's, hope that's interesting. Um, and with that, I will uh, open it up in case people have any questions or they want to talk about anything. And I think we'll start to see like those um, Solana numbers go up too, especially like uh, over the next month because we've put out so many more uh, claims over the past month so uh, uh, for people to connect. So I'm interested to see where that goes. There's a bunch of conversation around around the on-chain settlement stuff and 
and plans and trying to roll out. And so I think what we'll see is a lot more like, you know, big number rollouts over the next several months. So, uh, yeah, more to come there. But all right, I'll open it up for questions. If anybody has any questions, uh, Bows, you can you can jump on too if you want to um, if you want to add in. Sure. Um, in response to Batter saying about nominating me to move to Antarctica, <laughs> I can just say if you were stuck in with me in a enclosed space in Antarctica, you probably yeah. would have to end up using Brave, or uh, that might be very difficult. So I'd probably get us a few conversions there, but. Uh, I don't know if that's uh, in the work shit just yet. Um, yeah, my update, I'll keep it pretty short. I mean, I didn't do anything too crazy, but I did go to a uh, a crypto social meetup networking event thing. Um, didn't go to Breakpoint, unfortunately, but uh, I got to do something kind of more local-ish. Um, you know, they're kind of always cool. Uh, this one had quite a few people there who were more just like crypto web three curious, uh, which is always nice to see. Um, you know, of course I talked to people about brave. I, you know, from a variety of demographics, you know, several of them, you know, since they weren't just involved in the space had never heard of brave. So yeah, you know, one of them installed it. Not sure if he's going to actually use it, but you know, he's seemed kind of a little bit curious, but, uh, good kind of getting that brand recognition also increased but uh talk to other people who you know absolutely love it who like bat all bat still have bat from way back in the day um kind of got the glute them in on what we're currently doing and you know a lot of people you know just really had no idea and were pretty excited about what they heard just because uh you know those were things they always wanted that they just didn't know were being worked on and actually going to be reality. So that was kind of cool. Um, likely a few people uh, will probably be moving to actually having their rewards on soon since it uh, sounds like they want me to put them in for the on-chain beta. So, um, you know, those things add up over time, you know, getting people in, um, that means more, you know, bat distributed, more bat being held on chain, you know, Brave making a little bit more revenue and, you know, that stuff really adds up, I think, over time. And also that can help us get more people talking about Brave and Bat, so, and get more people into the ecosystem. And, you know, that's kind of really what we need for, you know, long-term, the long-term success and vision of it. So that's pretty cool. And uh, got a few people who introduced to it as well, who uh, seem pretty excited about it. Who, uh, really one of those pictures with me uh, with uh, Brave Merck, so, you know, I don't think most, I think I only have one person scan my QR code, but uh, I'm hoping there's a few other, I'm hoping a few of those people I talked to at the end who did it might have uh, be uh, brave conversions that just uh, maybe don't get captured in the data because they seem pretty, pretty stoked and pretty interested about it. So also uh, talked to some people about, you know, maybe some potential brave partnerships or other stuff. So I made a few good connections because a few of those people um, has historically like done stuff like organize uh, conferences and other stuff that I'm not going to say they're tiny, but they're also not huge, but uh, could be interesting there and some other things. So, you know, just throwing it out there for people, um, you know, eventually somebody will be the right match for some people. So, Awesome. That's great, man. Thanks, Baz. Killer update. It's in cripple resistance. You got a hand up. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Here yeah. Um, uh, I was wondering, you know, do you have any updates on uh, pricing packages for the different services like uh, BigTalk or AI or is there anyone are you are you uh, is there any discussion of doing a package deal yet yeah no that's a uh, it's a great question uh there was a whole session at this offsite today around uh premium and uh a lot of it was around um uh, you know the bundling options and uh you know making it uh how, how can we kind of um 
you know, accelerate the, the growth of the revenue from that. And uh, a lot of talk around, uh, you know, affordability and uh, ways that we can incentivize it and, and group it together. And uh, I think, you know, there, I didn't, I, not a ton I can share uh, at the moment, but there was a whole session on it. Um, and, and there was talk around like how to, we can, you know, make Leo more integrated with things, how we can um, make, a, you know, work on things like trials and things like that and, and more ways to like um, get people to test things out uh, that, that want to, you know, get a little more test uh, time with it um, and ways to bundle it. And of course, like uh, we could a bunch of stuff about pay with that too around uh, the premium services is something we really want to get um, done uh, soon. So uh, there was a bunch of discussion around that too, and some more tomorrow about that. But um, that's really kind of like what we were trying to drum uh, here was that like uh, for the crypto users and Brave, we want to really like maximize how we can utilize that um, among those users, especially, and then, uh, you know, work in ways to kind of get people interested in rewards and other things like that. But um, pay with that's a big part of that. And uh, it's something we want to, you know, focus a lot more on. And also like ways we can work with rewards too. Like um, some of this we've kind of talked about around the edges here, but ways that we can make the offering more robust. And, um, you know, we've got these people that are on rewards that, you know, are using a browser a lot. And um, what ways can we kind of, you know, make it more exciting and gamify it a bit. There was those kinds of workshops and things like that happening here too. So it's definitely something we want to work on more and uh, with the team. And we had a bunch of stakeholders in the room, people that are working on, you know, security side, the uh, the payment side, like, um, you know, the uh, the project management side, et cetera. Um, and, and then also like, you know, just uh, uh, higher ups too that need to be in the room. So it was good. You know, people, I mean, people don't want to be, people don't want to be nickel and dime to death and pay for the service and that service on, on every other thing, you know. You just give them one thing at once for a good price. Yeah, totally. And I think, you know, we've got like an interesting kind of split with reward users where you've got, crypto rewards users that are linked and and want to pay with that for things and so like pay with that will make it so that they have a way of like you know buying a um vpn or or the other premium services and then the other side of it too like we've got users that are using rewards because they love the project and you know want to see brave do well and i think you know there's ways we could discount or uh, bundle or, or make it available like um, on a, you know, incremental way too for, for them. Um, we kind of introduced some points around that and um, I don't have anything concrete, but like it was uh, it definitely discussed. I think these are things that we have that we can utilize and it, you can almost, if you can give people a taste of what it's like, you know, um, or even like cut the bill cost down because they're a rewards user, you know, or something like, where we can offer, you know, benefit um, and reward for, you know, using rewards, um, uh, they can uh, get a better deal, and uh, and have a have a better overall experience, and you know, continue to engage with with us on on the product. Has has there been any more talk about break talk offering like for the first half hour for free or something like that? We didn't talk about that, um, but that's an interesting point too. And I'll take it to the, the PM like as an idea to follow on because there was so much stuff we talked about where like uh, a lot of it was around the the bundling in general and, and around things like, um, you know, some of these alternate payment methods and, and some other things we could add. But I think that's a really good point too. Like if you could uh, make a, a certain amount of time, you know, a certain deal like it's something worth exploring to see what we could do there thank you yeah yeah you're welcome good 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 comment anybody else have uh questions or anything you guys want to talk about i wish i would of course gensler gets grilled today when i'm not in front of the computer i wish i would have seen that it sounds like it was fantastic let's see here 
Hey, so um, didn't Brave announce like something new, like Nebula or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Nebula is kind of like um, building on what we did with Star and with our P3A, uh, you know, uh, privacy preserving analytics. Um, it lets us get a better depth on what we can uh, kind of gauge uh, without, you know, compromising any of the privacy promises to our users. Um, and so, you know, Star was kind of an improvement on what we had with P3A and Nebula is an improvement on what we had with Star and our research team, uh, the privacy research team and, uh, and the broader research team all kind of work together on launching it. Um, and uh, it, it's going to help us to get a, a See, like we're so you know we, we get feedback from users which is fantastic but like a lot of the diagnostic stuff we get uh really helps with figuring out what sample sizes and uh, problems are happening at and uh and scale and depth of issues and and all that and so uh, nebula is going to help us to kind of take that to the next level which is really helpful with uh you know getting making sure that you know things like even web compat but other other areas too like um you know uh product feature adoption um, and, uh, and and churn things like that that are important we get a better better scope on um, without again without having to like uh, compromise the privacy of our users which is like such an important thing um, to, to keep promise up I think there's a blog post too that we had about it but that in essence is what it was is like uh, getting more granular on that so will this kind of like help you long term i mean beyond just optimizing your products but um help you maybe long term with doing like more granular advertising maybe giving getting having better data you could even give to um potential advertisers to maybe attract them to use brave well i think like potentially but also i think uh it can be helpful for other developers, right? Like um, on on building products. Like the nice thing about what we're doing here with this stuff is that uh, you know we tackle it with a certain purpose, right? Um, for what we're doing, but you know we open source it, put it out there. Uh, it's one of those things where devs can use it uh, how they want to use it, right? Like in certain ways. Uh, and so I think that you know the first step is getting it out there. And showing people how it works and 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 why it works and uh, the blog post I'll, I'll share it here just in case people um, haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Um, but I think it's it's one of those things where, you know, leading by example is like important, um, especially in times like these where you know uh, people might be taking shortcuts around this type of area. Um, we we aren't and uh, we're putting the resource effort in. Um, Hamed uh, from our uh, our head of research. Uh, do a really good job on, on the post and and uh, kind of breaking it all down. I'm trying to get him on the podcast too, so get an interview about all this stuff. But uh, yeah, cool. What else do you all want to talk about? Do you have any uh, numbers out for? For the AI, um, do you have numbers for Brave Do you have numbers for the AI? Do you think? Yeah, I don't think we put those out yet, um, and I'm not sure when we plan to. I think it's it's so early that we're kind of like letting it get to a certain size before we start publishing those things. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think it's one of those things we, we want to do. We also put out a post about uh, uh, privacy preserving advertising stuff um, about Mozilla. I'll share it here. I'm sure Keith probably tweeted about it. <laughs> but let me, let me throw it here. Uh, there we go. All right. Who's got a hand up? Let me see here. It's me, it's C-Ray. Oh, hey, what's up, man? How's you doing? Hey, all right. Uh, well, you were actually talking about AI. I figured I would ask, are there any thoughts of trying to make it simpler to connect to other models? For example, I know when I was taking a look at other browsers recently, 
I noticed uh, Firefox, you can enable it. And one of the options is like ChatGPT, where you can sign into your uh, OpenAI account and all that stuff. Is that anything that we'd ever be looking at doing within Brave or definitely trying to steer away from that? That's a good question. Like, I, I I know that the focus has initially been on like bringing the actual model in um, versus like kind of account level stuff, but I, I'm not sure. Like, uh, I can find out more on that. All right, because I know I've seen some questions where people was trying to figure out how to plug in any other models. For example, one for whatever reason wanted to actually use Google's Gemini, but they were struggling on trying to figure out how to do the API and how to add it in to bring their own. Keith, I think Keith might have had a guide around this. I don't know if you, you guys saw it yet. Um, let me see if I can find it on X really quick. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Well, yeah, and I think the hard part for some of them was how to get the API key, you know, where they had to go Oh, through. okay. Yeah. No, that's good feedback. We could work on that, too. Uh, let's see here. Luke, did you ever get around to... Uh responding to or potentially messaging that person I kind of like gave you the link to on Reddit who uh, was kind of like installing Brave for like people in a, like a retirement community. I'm um, like, they, they had like some feedback, I guess they could probably give you on like some of like, they were like kind of like quasi IT, but like some of the hangups that they saw with it as far oh, as like, oh, like that. I, I need to take a deeper look into that. I uh, I haven't had a chance mainly because I was traveling, I think. But let me see if I can um, dig into that one after the call today. And, okay. Uh, I gave, I know I also gave you some feedback from like somebody else from about like a few things that could be like improved on like the pages that Brave has related to like IT stuff. Yeah, so like, yeah. Really those were good. Um, let me look at the other one too and kind of put a better uh, summary on it together for the team yeah because i just figure uh you know talking to someone who kind of like actually has kind of done that stuff you know kind of help us better understand what some of the hang-ups might be oh it's always super helpful like um any like because we get feedback some from time to time from different IT people and it's always a little bit different um and, and very useful like for us to have so i'll, I'll take a closer look at that and uh, share it with some folks while i'm out here I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, of course. I appreciate you. That's awesome. Uh, C rate. Hey, I just noticed the uh, link that you shared for Keith. I yeah. wanted to give a heads up that when I go to that, it starts off, it says a brave hardening guide. When I click on the GitHub that is linked there, it goes to a 404, the page. You're, uh, this is not the web page you're looking oh for. Oh, my gosh. Look at me sharing. So publicly. that GitHub. Uh, Brave hardening guide at least no longer available to other people it seems yeah it's not available right now but i wanted to touch on the mozilla implementation of the ai it's not really private in a way and it's also not uh context aware of the page the like how brave could implement it is with like web panels like that should be the better way so people can just copy paste the context of the page and have it summarize it. Awesome. Yeah. Let me get that. Let me dig up that link then. My bad. I didn't mean to share the wrong one. Hang on. Keith, yeah. it's good to hear you. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> That's awesome, man. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Awesome. All right. What else do we want to talk about, game? We've got 12 minutes. Anybody? Shit. Uh, can we get a, like, I need to ask, uh, what was it? Uh, Brenton. Uh, yeah, Brian Bondi. I, I need to. Like DM, DM him about uh, the roadmap update. It's kind of outdated right now. Yeah, yeah. No, that'd be great. I, I can uh, I can ping it. I, I saw him today, too. I can uh, uh, ask him about it. But I think, yeah, yeah. If you want to ping him, too, feel free. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Let's see here. Oh, I think I found one that could work. 
Um, I have I have seen a couple of questions about the the image search on on search. Um, is uh, is that is that getting improved or um, how can that be improved more? For search. The image search. The image. Oh, the image search. Yeah. No, uh, that's one that uh, that came up. So, like, one of the things the uh, the team was talking about was specifically kind of like improving on that. And I think there's a couple of things we can do, um, web discovery stuff, but also uh, uh, you know getting more opt-ins on search or more search uh, users out of it. A lot of the focus of uh, the sessions has been around search too, like how we can increase adoption among uh, existing users and uh, and getting it out there, but also like what's missing, what what areas need some focus and uh, the team's aware too. Um, a lot of it's been uh, uh, kind of resourcing, but um, they're, they're, they're putting some effort into improving the image stuff for sure. So is it, is it more of a question of, of, of the public using it more or, or is that, is that basically part of the problem? It's a bit of both. Um, like image searches are a little bit different than, uh, you know, typical search queries that are text-based. So um, the it, it's a bit of like getting a longer tail on some of it and, and uh, it, it, not exactly one-to-one -one on, on, uh, on, you know, like the standard side. So I, I think they're digging into it more. I think it's one of those things where, um, they've been working on like a lot of answer engine stuff and, and, and other improvements to where um, the image search stuff was, uh, you know, not as much in focus, but now it is because like they definitely talked a lot about the feedback they're getting on that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. It's a good question. I saw some uh, ads today for pudgy penguin puzzles in here, Drew. Hope those things are uh, helping. And also, too, like um, I don't know if you all listened to uh, we did a spaces last week with um, on privacy. It, it, it was it was pretty good. I think uh, you know we had a bunch of people with different perspectives on there. Um, but uh, so I think uh, Godson, Battern, and Drew, Guillermo, everybody that made it on there. Uh, it's pretty pretty interesting one. Got a little spicy. Wait, wait. Oh, the the. <laughs> okay, I, was I was gonna ask because she literally showed up and said, "Oh yeah, it's cool if we, if we, you know, if everybody takes your information, you just have to decide what they take and what they don't take." And I was like, "No, that's not that's not right." And then yeah, she just started yeah. like trying to bamboozle me with like a bunch of technical jargon or something. I I, I didn't get that part. But... It was a lot but, of words. You know, uh, uh, and and no, but I thought it was cool. Like, guys, and I, you brought that example up around, like, um, you know, like uh, the the even tracking stuff as low as like two hundred bucks. You know, like the governments are doing that stuff now. Like people, people are talking about fear mongering and stuff. And I think it's like not fear mongering if it's like really happening, right? <laughs> like it's more <laughs> kind of informing people, and that's kind of what can be kind of a drag about this job sometimes too. Is like you know, uh, defining a problem, you have to educate people a little bit on it. And it's not very good news sometimes. And a lot of these folks in these spaces are very like feel good vibes for everything. And it's like, some things aren't very feel good, you know? <laughs> like, and, yeah, the what is it? Um, Telegram switched its like, you know, position on pure an anonymity. Like now they can, they're going to take off like some of your data and give it to like government and stuff. Because, you know, a guy, because the CEO just happened to get picked up because of what? He gave people a private place to talk about their feelings or something. I don't know. And yeah. it's like, 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 what are you talking about? It's, it's fear mongering. Like, Tornado Cash Dev is still in jail, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, and, and, people... and like, it's like one of those things, too, where I get it that people want there to be like this pure kind of start from zero approach on this. But if you're going to a site and the site's already tracking you and then like, then they want to care about the disclosure part after it's like, they've already 
they've already started off by tracking you, you know, like, um, and there's just a disconnect, I think, because I've been on a bunch of these uh, privacy, like Web3 privacy uh, oh. spaces, and um, some of them with like privacy projects where it's just kind of surprising. Um, they like look at it through too narrow of a lens sometimes where it's like, yeah, okay, like you might be working on this one little part of the puzzle that's more private, but like if you're blasting your info out there around it, it's not really That helpful. part hits hard, honestly. Uh, yeah. I'll refrain from speaking ill of any of the speakers, but I have some quotes that I took from, uh, <laughs> from that space that I think will all find hilarious. So the first one is blockchains are where you go to be surveilled. So, so that was uh, one that made me laugh. Yeah, and it, it wasn't even like like it was supposed to be a bad thing. She, she, she said it like, "Oh yeah, you should just expect to be watched if you're here." And it's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It? Like better and sad. That's a skill issue. Um, <laughs> another another one is sharing data with third party companies is good for all users as it provides a more immersive experience. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and uh, it was uh, privacy was defined as the lack of disclosure. So you know, if you're on camera, you know, at least they disclose it, and it's not really a privacy concern, is it? <laughs> <laughs> that was one where I was like, oh my gosh, uh, it, it was like kind of, but it, it, it just kind of shows you too. Like, I mean, there's there's much work to be done around. Uh, I, she has to be a fed. I, like I like I I came off thinking yeah this is probably like a fed you know trying to get it all and it's like looks at in the beginning like uh, the fact that some of these people do work uh, at privacy focused companies I mean one of these companies I'll tr refrain to say their name but one of these companies literally had privacy in their name <laughs> and I'm like come on <laughs> like like what are you talking about and, 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 uh, I hate to keep throwing in like personal um you know experiences but I'm I'm in Nigeria now right so. If you open an account, you, you get something called a, a bank verification number. You have to like do this like KYC thing. If if you don't do it, your daily limit is fifty thousand naira, right? And if you're wondering, well, how much is fifty thousand naira? It's it's like three dollars. <laughs> God, so I'd like to to ask you a question. How does a company ease their consumers into the idea of KYC? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be quiet now. <laughs> you know, I mean. Like, yeah. Well, and, and, and these things are happening all over the place too. Like, and, uh, and, and I feel like, and it was one of those things too, where like it had Hester Purse, the, the SEC commissioner, right? Like on the podcast and she brought it up. Like, I didn't even have to address it. Like she brought it up. Like we have to be careful with, uh, uh, how we approach regulation of these things, because if you don't do it correctly, you know, like, there you you lose a lot of the privacy that you would have and i mean i think uh godson like the the example i mean it's good to bring up those examples because like you're dealing with it right now like that is like a total that's a total loss of financial privacy right like if if even small amounts are getting uh tracked and then they're you're you're not getting an unlock unless you give them more info it's like pretty invasive and like you know gnarly like and people don't know about it like people are not aware about that you know yeah you know it's it's a lot you know scarier when when you're in a, a third country because the like the state does not even pretend to like care about your rights and freedoms and stuff yeah uh, binance has i think two executives now that are in jail in nigeria um and it's like well, what did they do to you know get put in jail um like the the government last year printed like a ton of money and inflation is like 300 percent now and it, it, instead of like saying okay we we messed up printing all this money during like you know COVID and stuff they just blamed it on binance and said it was the p2p market and oh my God. So, <laughs> and then then started to like you know try to raise the tax on like crypto holders or, or something and when binance didn't want to go along with it they just picked up a bunch of the uh, execs and put them in jail. And it's mm -hmm. like, <laughs> and they're still in jail, right? No, like, charges, nothing. Um, so it's like, it's a lot, you know. When you're uh, in a place like this, you can't really, like, enjoy, like, the, you know. At least in the West, people, like, assume you have, you have rights, you know. In, in, in Nigeria, for, you know, for example, you could just put someone in jail if you have enough money. Um, you just go to the police and you pay them, like, the amount it, is, it costs to put, you know, put someone in jail. And then they can put it, you know. They just put them in jail. So, you know, 
the people like don't really understand like the impact of this of this whole like uh industry on like a proper like at the edges uh level right they just sit at home in their you know nice european apartments and go well i, I don't really think we need privacy or whatever you know it's just up to you what do you know <laughs> People are clueless about it, man. Like, and, and people think about it too often. People think about it like it's like some thing of the past when it's actually like happening now. And like, if if we don't watch out, like technology use is used against people, right? Like to where it makes it easier for for these you know authorities to like you know monitor what you're doing or use that against you because that's really what it is, right? Like they're not just you don't just collect all this stuff. Just to have it there like once it's there it can be used against you you know and so that's something that people don't like to think about but it's a it, it gets where it gets because people didn't think about it right like or talk about it enough and so anyway i appreciate like that you uh you share that story on the space and you know with the folks here too because i think it's important for people to realize like it's now not everywhere is like uh you know where you're at now you know for most people so Good stuff, man. And I know we're we're just at time, so uh, want to thank everybody for uh, for joining this week. Um, you know, uh, uh, we'll we'll be back next week. Uh, same bad time, same bad channel. Uh, great updates. Uh, see you all online. And until then, have a good one. Take it easy, y'all. Thanks for having me. Bye, hey, you guys. Good, going, man. Bye, good night. Everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.